Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Today we're going to be trying something a little bit different. We're going to be doing uh, 3D printing news topics as well as 3D printing trends. So it's definitely something different and a new format. So any uh, suggestions or ways to improve this, uh, leave some comments down below. So diving into our first topic here, the US Air Force is officially embracing 3D printing hobbyist technology for military maintenance. They're going to be using bamboo lab printers to rapidly prototype and repair drones, cutting down repair time and costs. Honestly, this is huge. It gives a lot of validation to desktop 3D printers, gives validation to bamboo labs, and it's good to know that now I have a military grade 3D printer in my workshop. All right, next up on the docket here is the Sunlu E2 filament dryer. So I've had for a few years now the Sunlu S2 filament dryer, which is just a little single unit device that works really well for drying out filaments that have been sitting around for months or even a year, get that moisture and humidity out of them so they print better. So the new Sun Lu E2 model is a much bigger unit. It can fit two spools in at a time, and it can also go up to 110 degrees Celsius, which will actually help with annealing prints out of PETG. Um, something I haven't seen as a feature in a filament dryer before, but uh, there is a catch here. The kicker is, this thing's a little bit expensive at $400, which is probably putting it out of the price range for most consumers on what they're willing to spend on a filament dryer. I mean, heck, that's even higher than a lot of entry-level 3D printers. So we'll see when this comes out, what the reviews are, and how it performs. So Prusa just announced EasyPrint, a cloud-based slicing software aimed at making 3D printing easier than ever. This is still in beta mode, and they're getting early feedback before the wide release. It's designed to sync up with Prusa printers at this point, but it will be compatible with other 3D printers in the future. And as Joseph Prusa said, hopefully they can keep this as a free software while keeping most of the features. So this is definitely aimed at the newer generation of 3D printing enthusiasts that don't need to go so deep into the settings since the newer printers are getting pretty good these days. And it does have the ability to download models and slice everything from your mobile phone, which is getting more popular as well. So it sounds like this has a lot of similarities with a Bamboo Handy slicing software, and it's more in that direction. But once this gets a full release, we'll see what the feedback comes in like. Okay, so this is next level DIY madness. Emily, the engineer on YouTube, turned a 3D printer into a tattoo machine. And spoiler alert, she actually tattooed someone in the video. The video was great and super entertaining, just like all of Emily's videos. I highly recommend checking out the video but I lowly recommend somebody actually getting a 3D printed tattoo. The link of the video will be in the description down below. Nice job, Emily. And next up is the Voroff Automatic Ejecting 3D Printer. All right, so this is not new news. It's a few years old, but it's making the rounds around Reddit again recently. Basically, it's an automated print farm solution where the bed of the 3D printer swings down and some scrapers will actually remove the parts off of the bed. Then the bed will swing back up into place, re-level, and keep printing automatically. So this was conceived and developed by the open source community with all the Voron solutions. Um, and I really love to see cool, innovative stuff like this that comes from open source. And then eventually one day, Creality or others might implement this into their 3D printers right from the factory. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. All right, last topic here, and it's a big one. Benchy is now public domain. This means no more copyright restrictions. You can modify, remix, or even sell prints of Benchy without any legal worries. So get ready for a literal ocean of benchies to flood the market as people scrape the hundreds and thousands of benchies out of their closets to cash in on them. So most likely this is gonna be the start of the great benchy market crash of 2025. We'll see you there. All right, that wraps up the news topics, but we're not done yet. Let's go over to Prints of the Week where I printed off one model from Thingiverse and one model from Printables, and let's go have a quick review. Okay, so the first print of the week here, this is from Printables. It is a fidget Benchy, and it is well-timed with Benchy going onto public domain. Um, this is made by JTF Labs, and basically it's a spin on the Benchy model that has three fidget items. So in the chimney or smokestack here, we have a spring-loaded uh, spring smokestack. That's pretty cool. It does feel a little bit fragile, and I saw in the comments this had broke off for some other people, so be careful with this. It's got a nice little joystick here that can uh, control your benchy, I guess, conceivably. And then on the bottom, it's got a little uh, spring switch here that's supposed to click back and forth. 
Um, mine didn't come out so well. There's not quite uh, interference there. Maybe you can hear it a little bit. So I think this needed to be just a millimeter or two longer and it would have a nice more satisfying click there. So all in all, this is a really creative, uh, fun spin on the Benchy model. So I give this a thumbs up. Next up here from Thingiverse is the Stick Shift Fidget by DZ Jeej. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but the link will be in the description below. So I like this one. Um, this is basically a fidget model that uh, can shift into gears. You got typically first is up here, second, third, fourth, and reverse. Um, really fun to play with here. Um, I should have had first gear here, but uh, the cats lost the fourth gear, so I just went zero, one, two, three. Um, and I believe this does have some holes in it here, so you can put it on a keychain. This one's pretty durable and it's quite fun to play with. So again, this is the print of the week from Thingiverse. Highly recommend it. All right, so that wraps up the video today on 3D printing news topics and printing trends. This is a super new format for me and I'd like to get some feedback. So leave some comments down below if this is something you'd like to see more of in the future, if there's some things I should adjust or different types of... Uh, industry news you'd like to see. Uh, looking forward to some feedback and really not sure if I'll keep doing this or if you guys like it, I think I would like to keep doing it. So let me know what you think down below and until next time, we'll see you at Desktop Inventions.